Hello, brothers and sisters in YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a holy time with Jesus. As we continue this series on discernment today, I was going to name the teaching, How to Discern the Will of God. However, I realized that it's more applicable to the teachings on the tools of discernment I'll do tomorrow. Well, I'll be sharing with you tools on how to discern the Lord's will. So today's teaching, I want to discuss on why it's important to discern the will of God in the first place. That you may have a desire to really use and apply the tools of discernment in your own lives in order to follow Jesus more perfectly. I think many souls desire to follow Jesus, but many are unsure of what he's saying, or what direction to take, or what his will is, and others have a sense of the will of God, but don't obey. As the Lord has told us, everything hinges on obedience. One may ask, if I don't know his will, then how can I obey? That's why it's important to read his word. In God's word, he gives us several instructions on what pleases him and what doesn't. Jesus calls us to obey these instructions that we may do God's will. Furthermore, as you desire to walk in intimacy with Jesus, he then has a unique will for each of us to follow from moment to moment. In scripture it says, 1 Corinthians 10, 23, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. Permissible means permitted or allowed. Here Paul tells us, yes, we're allowed to do everything because of our free will, but not everything is beneficial for us or builds us up. Jesus has a permissible will and a perfect will for each day, each moment, and for each action in our lives, but he desires that we strive for perfection. As the scripture says, Matthew 5:48. Be perfect, therefore as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Now God's perfection is not like the world's perfection. He's not looking for you to have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed with no weaknesses. No, perfection to God is simply walking in complete charity, love, and obeying the Father. That is perfection before the Lord, charity. And that is what he's been teaching us heart dwellers, that climbing the mountain of holiness to perfection is through brotherly love alone. Once again, charity. He's looking for his bride to be perfect in love in all she does. Jesus never judges our actions, but our motives, and he never disappoints goodwill. If we make an act of our will in every decision to do the Lord's perfect will, whether the results turn out good or not, we gain much merit in the sight of the Lord, just because our hearts willed it. He desires for his brides to be in union with him, which means we must seek out his holy will in everything so that we no longer live, but Jesus lives in us. He gets to live out his will in our lives rather than so many who have given their free will over to their own desires or living in God's permissible will, but not gaining any benefit from it. Seeking the Lord's holy will was a new idea to me in my Christian walk, especially in this generation where we rarely hear teachings on holiness. I just thought the Christian life was about reading God's word, going to church, helping the needy, giving him my first in the morning for prayer, and that was it. In the church, we've been taught to see God's presence, seek your purpose, pursue your gifts, but never to seek his holy will. So after praying and spending time with the Lord in the morning, I thought I had the freedom to do what I felt inspired to do with the rest of my day, which I did living in his permissible will. But I didn't realize the Lord really desired intimacy such a union with me that he desired for me to seek his will in all the major decisions I made throughout the day, and even my actions, so that I could be more united with him, in mind and in heart, that me and Jesus could truly become one. I didn't realize he had a perfect will for how I spent my time, how I spent my money, and what I ate, and how I used my gifts, and where I lived, or I went to church, and who I married, and what I did that morning, what I did that afternoon, and what I did that evening. There were many times where in the evening I was tired and wanted to watch a movie or relax. However, when I sought him on how to use my time, he would rather have me work on the channel. There were other times when in the morning I wanted to spend hours and pray with him. But a situation would arise where someone needed help, and his perfect will for me was to stop my prayers and come to the aid of another. There were other times where I wanted to utilize my gifts by working on the channel, but he wanted me to spend the day working on the piano instead. Though many times I wanted to buy things for my new apartment I just got, I felt were necessary, like another couch, paintings for the wall, nice things to better furnish my apartment, but I sought him for his perfect will, 
he told me no, they were frivolous. There were other times I wanted to satisfy my flesh and eat some loaded nachos, but he wanted salad instead. Yes, God is in the details. There were many times I wanted to hang out with good Christian friends, but the Lord's perfect will was to stay home and be in prayer instead. There are other times when I desired marriage, and the Lord revealed to me one after the other that my suitors were not his perfect will for me, but that I should continue to wait for his first choice. Looking back, imagine if I would have chosen according to my own will or my own discernment, I definitely wouldn't be here today. You see, seeking and doing God's perfect will is our protection and will lead us to our destinies. However, going outside of God's will in our lives, even things permissible, will lead us to more trials than he desired necessary. Long and journey up the mountain and sometimes missing our destinies altogether. One example of God's permissible will being done versus perfect will happened here in the community where the Lord told Mother Claire to build five hermitages. She did. However, decided she wanted a central house to be built to entertain visitors. The building is by far the biggest here and it became a spectacle for the neighbors to file a complaint against us in the county. The Lord told Mother Claire it was his permissible will but she realized if she would have done what he'd asked, we may have avoided this whole trial we're still in. However, God still uses everything, even when we stray from his perfect will, for our good, because this trial has sanctified the community, and we get opportunity to really pray for our enemies and love them too. All through scripture, Jesus continues to remind us that he came to do the will of the Father. John 4:34. My food, says Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. He only speaks according to the will of the Father, works miracles according to the will of the Father, died on the cross for the love and the will of the Father. Luke twenty two forty two. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. So all that Jesus lived for, ate, and died for was to do the will of the Father, and he did it perfectly. The will of God in your lives when following Jesus many times will lead you to carry your own cross daily just as Jesus did. It will lead you to die to yourself, and many times it may be very painful in the moment, just as Jesus told the Father, if you're willing to let this cup pass. But nevertheless, he yielded to the perfect will of God, and so must we. Many of us, if we're honest, don't really want to know God's will. We think it's something you won't want to do or want to hear, and you're probably right. However, we must also remember that God's perfect will is always beneficial for us, even when we don't understand it, it will lead to building his kingdom, his glory, grow us in much virtue, and lead to intimacy with him. We must live, eat, and die for the will of God. That too must be our food, to do his will, moment by moment. So I ask you now, have you sought the Lord in your life for his perfect will? Are you living for yourself, according to churchianity, or the status quo or culture? Are you more concerned with living your best life in this world and living your next life eternally full of remorse, shame, and regret because you live for your will and that of others rather than the one that mattered the most? Here, I'd like to end with the prophetic message Jesus gave to Mother Claire from living in God's will and destiny. Jesus began, As you get closer and closer to me, relying always on my wisdom and will from moment to moment, you will find that your life will straighten out and soar. These things that have held you back will no longer be an issue in your life, my dearest Claire. I want moment-to-moment -moment obedience and deferring to me in everything. This pleases me more than you can possibly imagine. This makes you moldable, tractable, someone I can easily steer, a vehicle that responds to the driver. In this way, I dodge many bullets, and he traps the enemy to swerve you off course. To live this way and be at peace, this is the pinnacle of the Christian walk. This is absolutely the most important place to be, next to charity. Many cannot hear me because they're not willing to let go of their own agendas. When they begin to have success in hearing me, I ask something of them that caused them to feel insecure and threaten. Well, all of a sudden they can't hear me anymore or get confirmations. Of course, the enemy is well aware of this, and being the opportunist that he is, takes full advantage of them, throwing more and more confusing demons into the mix until they're thoroughly confused and resort to the counsels of their family, friends, and even other spiritual people. 
counsel that would not threaten that security. My people, please don't sign up to be my vessels unless you're willing to be broken, ground into fine powder, then rehydrated by the living waters of my spirit and reformed by my very own fingers. The making of a vessel into honor is a messy business. The pot must be broken, and every vestige of the old life must be given up and ground to a powder. If not given up, in fact, and in practice, at least given up by the resolution and continued attempts in obedience. A potter must work the mass with his hands and slam the clay down on the slab to remove the hidden air bubbles, the pride, which will cause the vessel to burst in the pressure and temperatures of the kin. Unless that lump of clay is willing to be slammed down repeatedly with great injury done to their pride, that clay is useless to me. It would only explode under pressure and pressures what is necessary to bring the vessel to completion, into my service. So I entreat you, if you are showing up and offering yourselves to serve me, and are not prepared to sustain heavy losses, losses of all you are, all you could be, all you have been in the world, if you're not willing to have the pride pounded out of you, please do not weary me with a double mind. Rather stay in the world until you are fully sick to death of it, and truly are willing to go through anything to serve me. I will still love you. I will still hope for you. I will still be there for you. But we will not have a working relationship, nor the sweet fellowship I enjoy with my bride. Nonetheless, I will love you and provide for you. Nothing will change. I will still take you to heaven. But your life will be a lackluster, lukewarm and dull. There will be a piercing remorse when you see others promoted and doing what you once dreamed of doing. You may even fall to envy and jealousy, which reflects a hidden desire in you that you're never willing to die to have. My people, many are called, few are chosen, and sadly, much to my dismay, even fewer respond. God bless you guys until the next message.